Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video we are going to learn the Brunstrom hand manipulation technique that can be utilized by a physiotherapist to successfully unlock the spastic hand in a hemiplegia or a stroke patient and facilitate the releasing or the finger extension movements. Now it is important to note that one must not attempt to forcefully open a spastic hand in a hemiplegia or a stroke patient. Now this is so because any attempt to forcefully extend the fingers is only going to strengthen the reflex arc of these spastic hand muscles and is going to further strengthen the finger flexion movement. And therefore it becomes important for a physiotherapist to know the skills of manipulating the hand in order to release this tension and facilitate the finger extension movements. It is also a common observation and lot of physiotherapists who are working in the field of stroke rehabilitation have experienced it. Once the patient is given hand function exercises in which he has to grasp different objects of different shapes, size and texture, it becomes difficult for the patient often to release them. The passive manipulation technique that we are now going to learn should be utilized by the physiotherapist alternatively with the grasping exercises to solve this problem. Also, it has to be kept in mind that during the passive manipulation, the hand should not be touched or gripped along the reflexive zones as it will further enhance the flexor tone of the hemiplegic hand. Now, keeping these things in mind, let's start with the practical demonstration of Brunstrom hand manipulation technique. The patient and the therapist are seated facing each other. The therapist next grips around the muscles of the thenar eminence and supinates the patient's forearm passively. The therapist next pulls the thumb out of the palm by moving it first at the carpo-metacarpal joint followed by metacarpopharyngeal joint and then at the IP joint. While maintaining the grip around the thumb, the therapist now starts supinating and pronating the patient's forearm slowly and repeatedly. The therapist emphasizes on gaining more and more end range of supination movement and takes care that the pressure on the thumb is lessened while the forearm is pronated and increased during the supination movement. Cutaneous stimulation over the dorsum of the wrist and hand is given by the therapist every time the patient's forearm is in supinated position. This thumb maneuver acts like a key point of control which helps in the redistribution of the excessive flexor tone towards the extensor muscles of the fingers. The patient at this point of time might demonstrate some voluntary finger extension movement. The therapist now using the free hand delivers rapid distally directed sweating movements over the proximal phalanges and then over the distal IP joint. This maneuver helps in facilitating and strengthening the stretch reflex arc of the finger extensor muscles and therefore when the MCP and the IP joints are moved suddenly in the flexion direction they bounce back into partial extension. The therapist now while maintaining a continuous contact with the patient's fingers performs a vigorous rolling movement in an extremely rapid and uninterrupted manner. The maneuver results in rapid flexion of the MCP and the IP joints which further strengthens the stretch reflex activity and as a result all the three joints of the fingers bounce back into extension. The patient's finger joints now become almost fully extended and no or little tension can be felt in the flexor muscles of the hand. The therapist now using the free hand 
places the fingertips over the distal IP joints of the patient's hand and while maintaining the finger in extended position pronates the patient's forearm. The therapist's other hand maintains its grip around the patient's thumb and also exerts slight pressure on the dorsum of the wrist to keep it in neutral or slightly extended position. The therapist now stands and makes an about face turn to stand beside the patient's involved side and raises the patient's arm to horizontal position. The therapist now performs a distally directed stroking movement using the heel of the hand starting from the MCP joint and progressing distally towards the IP joints. Reflexive finger extension can be further facilitated by passively flexing the MCP and the IP joints during the stroking movement. So this is how the Brunstrom passive hand manipulation can be utilized by the physiotherapist to decrease flexor tone in the spastic hand of a hemiplegia or a stroke patient. Please do remember that this is a total passive manipulation technique and the patient is instructed to remain as relaxed as possible throughout the procedure. Once the flexor tone is significantly reduced, the patient can then be asked to perform the releasing or the finger extension activities. So I sincerely hope that the information shared in this video is going to be helpful for you all. Do provide us your valuable feedback by commenting in the description link below about the outcome of the manipulation session when you try it on your patients. So see you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.